Welcome. This is episode 400. What a big milestone. Hooray! And what better way to celebrate it but in the company of some of my favorite, dedicated and wonderful listeners. I know that some of you also wanted to be on this call, but because of time zones and scheduling, it didn't work out. But I want you to know how much I appreciate your thoughtfulness, your listenership, your loyalty and support. I am going to skip a lengthy introduction and mention my favorite Chinese proverb, which really captures how I feel about the podcast and the authentic parenting community. It goes like this. An invisible red thread connects those who are destined to meet regardless of time, place, and circumstance. The thread may stretch or tangle, but it will never break. Yes, we are connected by that invisible thread and I am eternally grateful for you. Thank you. Before we get to today's episode, let me just say that I am super excited to invite you to our signature event this year again. Yes, we are hosting an in-person live event this year again. Join Live Podcast 2024 on Saturday, April 27th at 6 p.m. in beautiful and historic Princeton, New Jersey. You can get your tickets at AuthenticParenting.com forward slash live podcast. We are almost sold out, but if you hurry, you can make it. My special guest for this year is former guest of the podcast, psychologist, author, and podcaster himself, Seth Gillihan. He's a brilliant author, thinker, and just a wonderful human being. You can listen to his conversation on the podcast on the power of radical acceptance in episode 378. And if you want to meet Seth and myself in real life, you better get your ticket today. The topic of the evening will be finding healing, peace, and joy. You will unlock powerful insights and transformative tools for deeper self-connection, mindful presence, living open-heartedly, mastering negative thoughts, and lasting happiness. You will also meet one of my recent podcast guests at the event, not to mention some of my favorite listeners and biggest fans. We have food, music, activities, there is free parking, and the tickets are really affordable. Enjoy an evening away from your routines and daily responsibilities, nourish your soul, connect with others, and recharge. One of my listeners is coming all the way from Tennessee, and I cannot describe how happy I am to meet her. Get your tickets today again at AuthenticParenting.com forward slash live podcast. We hosted one last year, which was a huge success. If you're a regular listener, you may remember listening to the recording of the live event. My guest was Danielle Mate, and the topic was updating your relationship with your parents. If you want to see highlights from last year's event, I have put together a short video. Find the link in your show notes. Join us this year for Live Podcast 2024. I really want to meet you in person. I promise it will be the highlight of your year. Join us for live podcast 2024 in beautiful Princeton, New Jersey on April 27. Get your ticket today. And if you have questions, be sure to get in touch. And now please enjoy this milestone episode. And Anna, I met you in 2016. You spoke at the Holistic Moms group and I had 
just my oh. son at the time. That's how I originally met you. And it was a very funny, the way that the whole talk went and my question to you, the way you answered me was hysterical. It was just not what I expected at all. Oh, but it no. was great. I fell in love with you then. <laughs> oh God. What was your question? What did I say now? I want to know. <laughs> it was very funny. I said, I was so naive and I had no idea. And I just said, I said, listen, my son is going to start talking soon. And I know that he's going to start saying, no, I don't want to deal with that. So what do I do? And you stood up and you said, wow, your son is going to start saying no. And you better get used to it because... (laughs) It was you just put me in my place. It was so funny. And you broke it down to me and, and I was like, I like her. I really oh like God. her. <laughs> oh, it was man. great. But I <laughs> funny enough, I do remember that question. And I often mention that story, but I had no idea that it was you. Now I feel bad. That's, <laughs> That's hysterical. Great. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, I remember. I'm like, this naive mom says, I don't want to ever say no to my son. I'm like, why would you ever want to do that to your kid? You have to say no to your kid. (laughs) Like, that's a useful thing, you know? No, it was that I didn't want him. You know how kids are always in the no phase? Like, no, no, no. When they first start talking, that was the, I said, I know he's going to start saying no. And, you know, how do I stop that? And you were just like, no, there's just no way. Absolutely not. It was great. I fell in love with you then. <laughs> oh, well, glad. I'm glad. I am straightforward. I guess you can say that. You can say that. My clients like that too. I am. Yeah. Although I have to learn to tame that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I think it's the jersey in you. Oh, God. <laughs> You're real. You just say it how it is. And sometimes people just need to hear that. I know I have when you've. Oh, stop it. I didn't expect this is going to be like this crucifying event, the celebration. But let's start like that. Anna, it's a positive trait. Seriously. It, it is. No, but I feel like now everybody's sharing their stories that they had with me. And when you said, Julie, because I was thinking about that during the pandemic, I was so rude to you at one time. I can never forget that. But I want to blame that on the pandemic. And we have worked through and Colleen was witness to it because it was it was. <laughs> It was in a group text and I still cannot believe that happened, but I am so grateful that we worked things out. It's past and Julie and I are still the same friends. You know, I don't hold anything against you or anything, but Colleen, do you have a story like that since we're talking about? I don't have it. I don't think that you and I have ever had, like, we need to have our coming to blows moment, apparently, or like our, just our, our big thing. I think, uh, (laughs) we haven't gotten to that yet. I was actually just talking to my husband about all the holiday cards from that year and how it was like, you know, normally you get a whole bunch of holiday cards and they're just like, okay, cool, whatever. And I was like, I still have them all saved. They were like some of the most, you know, honest and direct cards I think I've ever gotten because, you know, I think we had some of the, some just really authentic, real conversations during the pandemic. And so I got, you got to see people in a way that normally they're kind of a little bit more guarded. And so, yeah, I think that's, that's what stands out the most for me is some of those real conversations. And so in the same way that, you know, being direct is, is good. It brings out some of that. You can't have those honest conversations if people are holding back because then you don't really know what's going on. Yeah, I agree. I do have the cards too. So Lauren, you don't know what we're talking about. But during the pandemic, we I started the support group and Jen and Colleen and many others were part of it. We would meet every week. And, you know, the pandemic obviously was dark and we were dealing with all sorts of things. And then I said, how about we do a holiday card exchange? You know, obviously we don't want to know each other's addresses and things like that, but I think Julie organized it and we sent each, it was anonymous, right? We just picked a person and we sent each other cards and everybody received cards from the support group. And I do remember they are so thoughtful. And I remember my husband read one is like, you have a whole different life out there. You know, like this, who are these people? Like they know so much about you or they wish such thoughtful, genuine things. And it wasn't just like Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. It was really moving, touching, thoughtful messages. And I do have them. I saved them all. Yeah, it was a, you know, the pandemic was a pretty dark time, not just for us, but for our spouses and our kids. And on a 
don't be too hard on yourself, but I was a broken record about the same issues going on in my house. And I just didn't know how to make the changes. And, you know, it's like, you can complain about the same thing over and over. I was trying to make adjustments and do different things. It was like about a nighttime issue with my kids and how nighttime still are crazy in my house. But that was also around the same time me and my daughters were all diagnosed with ADHD. And so I'm like, and you said, Julie, you need a routine. And I'm like, routines don't work for us. And now, you know, with researching ADHD and executive function, I'm like, it makes sense. But we do have a semi routine going at least my 15 year old does now she does her nighttime routine, like without us even having to ask her our 12 year old on the other hand, that's another story. But yeah, I mean, we were all really there for each other. I remember having like conversations with Colleen on the side and with everybody in the group, we would talk to each other on the side as well. Those that group, help get me through the pandemic. And when I talk about it with my husband, he smiles. He's like, that's so weird. Like you have friends through Facebook and through a podcast. What? And I'm like, you have no idea. Like these are the people that have helped me raise my children and have helped me get through some of my darkest moments. Like without this group, I would not be where I was today. And I can honestly say like, I have grown tremendously. My, I'm not wearing rosy colored glasses when I look at my kids anymore. I see past their behaviors and I don't take it personally anymore like I did five years ago when we first started all of this. So, Well, I started the podcast you asked in 2015, but obviously I had no idea where I was heading, what it's going to turn into. And I think one of the best things that came out of this podcast is the community that has built around it. Honestly, I know so many wonderful people through this podcast, and I know it's a community that feel, especially during the pandemic, we deepened that connection and that sense of community. It never left me, you know, I have the podcast, but it's the community that matters the most. Obviously, it impacted my life and changed my life. I've grown as a person, as a professional in so many ways I have changed. But I think the community is the biggest gift for me that came out of this podcast. And I feel like the podcast is this its own entity, like imagine the universe. Um, The podcast is out there and it has its own satellites, I guess, or the planets that surround it. And these are the listeners who listen and we're joined together. You know, we're part of this. I mean, what is a podcast? You know, like I create something, but there are people who listen and that's what matters, the people. And every time I meet the listener, I'm like, wow, I'm blown away. This like, they are very similar. You can create an archetype of the Authentic Parenting Podcast listener. They are wise, sage, like Colleen. I always, when I am doing the support calls, when Colleen is there, I'm like, I can relax because I always feel pressured to answer someone's questions smartly or, you know, be supportive, not just like listen. And I'm like, Colleen is there. Like if I'm not on my best today, she's going to say something like punchy, wise, to the point. It's like, I can rely on her. You know, it's true. I'll give the same bluntness, Anna. (laughs) (laughs) Is that what it is? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I think knowing the people in your community It's like, I trust these other humans' opinions versus just putting it on like some random, you know, local group where you're going to get the full spread where it's like, not a punitive parent. I'm not, you know, like it's an opinion I can trust. And so there's so many other, you know, ways of looking at things that within this group, you can like the same way that, you know, Julie talked about. I've had sidebar conversations with other, you know, members because it's like, hey, I'm trying to work this out. What are your thoughts? And it's an opinion I can trust versus there aren't a lot of people that are doing it with the, okay, what am I doing to impact this? Rather than like, why, how do I get my kid to stop this thing? (laughs) Yeah, we're on the same page. I feel like we share similar values. We're on the same growth trajectory. Obviously, our stories are very different. But when Julie was going through the pandemic, I'm like, we would have sidebar phone calls. And I'm like, Julie, you won't believe you're describing exactly what's happening in my home. And we would just connect and talk like for hours, like there was no solution, but just ability to vent and share. 
it's just so priceless for me. What came out of this podcast, I would have never guessed. And I met Julie and Lauren in person. You know, Colleen, I have never had a chance to meet you in person yet, but they came to my conference in 2019, right? It was before the pandemic. Yeah. So Lauren, I want to give you the floor if you want to share anything, how this, I know you've been listening to this podcast for a while. Why are you still here? (laughs) (laughs) I think you, well, like I said before, I just like your approach. I really liked that right from the start, you really put me in my place. It wasn't wasn't what I expected as a, a response at all. So I certainly like your approach to parenting in general, but I think really why I'm here is because this just wholeheartedly falls under mindful parenting approach, which is absolutely aligned with who I am, where I want to be, and all I strive to do as a mother. And, you know, your guest speakers, I mean, it's just one after the other, even sometimes where I'm like, I'm not really that interested in that topic. I listen to it and I'm like, I'm so glad I just listened to that because it just completely changed my way of thinking or it gave me an idea for this or it's just, I'm just constantly inspired by you, by your guests and everything about it. So that's exactly why I'm here. I was just going to say, I think a lot of your listeners are wanting to be respectful parents and trying to break the cycle of how we were raised maybe, or at least that's me and what I'm getting from everyone that I've spoken to. And so listening to some of your podcasts, it gives us the tools and the skills of how we can parent respectfully versus how we were raised. And so it's breaking those beliefs of what we were taught growing up. You know, no, you do this because I told you to do this. And now it's getting our kids buy-in where many people are are thinking that we're pushover parents, but we are, I'm building a respectful relationship with my children. I'm a cycle breaker and I see it with my children. And when I'm with my parents, my kids see that relationship and I can see them looking at me like, why is your mom or dad talking to you like that? What's happening? And, you know, we explain to them different generations. This is what they learned. We're doing things a little bit differently. So I've learned a lot of the tools and skills from you and the group and your podcasts. Yeah. How about you, Colleen? How many years have you been part of this community? No, that's a good question. I have no idea. (laughs) (laughs) I'll have to ask you to go back and look to see like when I joined oh, the group, yeah. the, the Facebook group that might uh, give me indication because I know I stumbled upon the podcast, like searching keywords like emotions, parenting, respect, you know, like I have no idea what one triggered your podcast, but it was like, oh, interesting. And then, you know, you'd like listen to them and, you know, we've kind of talked about it. You had uh, Dan Siegel on. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like, I don't like fangirl for a lot of people, but like Dan Siegel is one of those people, which is really funny to me. Cause if you had told me that like 20 years ago, like, yeah, there's this like psychologist and neuroscientist, like that's going to be one of your heroes at one point, I'd probably laugh you off, you know, out the door. And so, yeah, in the, in the same way that Lauren was talking about the, the different variety of guests has been kind of that thing that it's like, oh, interesting. And some of them don't always land for me. Where it's like, eh, you know, that's not my jam or I don't quite, you know, see eye to eye with that one. But there's always an interesting discussion and it helps me evaluate, you know, okay, is this a new perspective I want to bring in? Or is it one where it's like, okay, I can understand that, but that's still not, you know, the, the means in which I want to proceed. And so I think that's been the thing for me that's been the most helpful and interesting about the podcast is the variety of just different topics and stuff. Like Laura was saying, like, eh, is that the topic I want to dig into? And, you know, I always cherry pick the ones that I think are the most exciting to me first. But yeah, then you get to some of those other ones. It's like, oh, this is an interesting person. Or you then go down the rabbit trail of their work. And it's like, oh, yeah, there's so much more, you know, here to these people. So yeah, I feel like sometimes I think about it. I'm like, It's been eight years, eight plus. Am I covering the same things? Am I repeating myself? Is the content fresh? Am I covering similar content? But I'm happy to hear that some of them don't land and some of them are different because I do want to 
bring different perspective, but not drastically different. Obviously, we still want to maintain the integrity of the show, right? I stand for certain values, but I do sometimes also don't resonate with the guest. Or if it's a, like I said, right, one of the latest episodes near AL, I completely disagree with him on certain things. I couldn't articulate on the podcast. I didn't want to argue with him. But there are things he says that are very useful and applicable. And I think part of it doing this podcast, part of it is expanding our minds and, you know, exposing ourselves to different ideas and perspectives. That's also part of growth, right? We don't have to, like, I'm not going to spoon feed you always the same yummy, juicy, like uh, the honey every time. And that's like, no, that's not good. Like, let's shake things up, but not too much because then like, I don't want to disturb the secure base here. <laughs> I'm mixing my metaphors, you know, but I feel like it's a challenge for me to keep bringing new people and covering, let's say I'm talking about trauma. I don't want to bring a new person and talk about the things that we already talked about. You know, I'm always looking for new angles, new layers so that my listener can, he can take away something new. Yes, it's about trauma. Wow. But I learned this from this episode. It wasn't a repetition that I'm always keeping that in my mind. There's some episodes that I would listen to over and over during the pandemic. Don't ask me which ones, but like probably about boundaries and communication. So literally, you know, when I would talk to you, I would either, when I would be taking my walks, I would either be talking to you or listening to one of your podcasts regularly. Lauren, how about you? What do you have to say about a variety of topics and stuff? I love it. And I think that's the the cool thing about podcasts is that even though, you know, you're you're always having to come up with new content, I really liked what you did this past year, how you spotlighted some of the top episodes and why. And you even do that a lot in your newsletters, sometimes where you shout them out. And it's so helpful to me. And I'm a regular listener where I'm like, ooh, I totally missed that one. Or how did I not see that? You know, I so it's there's so much that goodness that you've done. So even just just like highlighting it and bringing it to the surface. It's just, it's so great that they're always there because it doesn't matter really when they're from the, that content is just always, it's always relevant. So like even when Colleen was just talking about the Dan Siegel episodes, I must have missed that. So I just jotted it down and I will go back in time on your podcast and listen. And that's kind of the beauty of this. Like even though you do have to come up with new stuff just by even shouting out previous topics or having those guests on again is just, it's great. I love what you do and how you do it. It's good. It's working. Oh, good. I love hearing that. And FYI, I know by heart which one is Dan Siegel episode because that's the top one search engine. I always get this Google Analytics review. It's episode 260. Perfect. <laughs> I know that one by heart. <laughs> I Don't ask me other numbers, but that's the one I know by heart. So do you guys, Colleen, you already mentioned Dan Siegel episode. Do you guys remember any particular episodes from the past that are like that one episode or one topic or guest or conversation. Like you don't have to remember obviously the title or the number or the guest name, but maybe you do. What is one that made a difference for you? Or maybe it's not one, but there are multiple. And I'll say mine too. Like without like doing any homework, obviously if you did homework, you would be more prepared, but without any homework. I just re-listened to the one that you interviewed me and my then 12-year-old when she was just diagnosed with ADHD. And we listened to it together recently. It was really fun re-listening to that and hearing and seeing how much growth we've had even since then. So obviously, that's one of my favorite episodes. But there's another one with a woman. I cannot think of her name. Or It was on boundaries and communication. And it was in 2020 because... That's when it came out. And that's, I'm going to try to look it up. Yvette Rasmus, that must be her. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. I can tell. Yeah. You can quiz me. Let's say, uh, because I'm excited if you can quiz me. I'm so curious. <laughs> Wasn't it like about being compassionate with yourself, like in communicating effectively or with kindness? That episode? Right. No, Yvette Erasmus talks about relationships, needs, particularly. I had her maybe three times on the podcast. I want to have her back again this year. I haven't reached out, but I really, she is like so wonderful. Yeah. How about you, Colleen, besides the Dan Siegel episode? Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I feel like as soon as you ask the question, 
they all like disappeared from my head. I really enjoyed, um, you did a round table with Ellen Lakey on her last name. I'll figure out who she is. But you did a round table, like I think a year and a half back, maybe two. And it was nice to be able to kind of have those Q&A kind of with the authors and kind of talk through some of the different topics that were at hand. I'm blanking on what the topics were at the moment. Yes, yes. No, I know what who she is. Ellen Gottlieb. Yes. Ellen Gottlieb. Yes. I do remember that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I've appreciated those. You did one more recently, the nervous system. They talked about some exercises for, you know, adjusting and kind of regulating the nervous system, which was like serendipity timing of a topic that I had started to go down myself. And so it was lovely to have another resource to kind of get into because yeah, it's one of those areas that I know nothing about. And so it was really great to listen to and to have some practical exercises to be able to kind of take away and be like, oh, I can try those things right away. So those are the ones that are standing out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, Lauren, I know you sent us a voicemail for that uh, particular thing and you mentioned your favorites. Yeah. I yeah, I don't want to put you on a spot, but... Uh... It's okay. Yeah. I really like how, you know, in the recent years, you've put a lot more emphasis or, or keep bringing the topic of up of screen time and, and devices, because I really feel like this is a territory that is so brand new. And that's what we have to just keep doing is talking about it more and having other perspectives because we have to figure this out together. And the only way we could do that is by having more conversations. So I would definitely say any of those that have that topic. And I really like when you have Laura Froyan on. She's The two of you are so similar, but you also are different. And I think where you're so similar is because you share that commonality of such an emphasis on compassion, which is just so beautiful and it's so important. And it's just always nice to listen to the two of you because you always do have different perspectives. Mm -hmm. So it's I always I like those as well. Yeah, I love doing it with Laura. You're right. We're very different. And I love her calm presence. And I am like more energetic. And I say something in, you know, in a hurry and bluntly, and she has a different perspective. And yeah, I like that. It's that there's a good balance there. Yes, Mm. that's that's exactly how to put it. Yeah, I really like her perspective too. Boy, there've been so many episodes. It's like unbelievable. You know, 399. I know, right? It's like, (laughs) yes, if it's like 399, it's like, wow, like, why am I here? (laughs) Like, why am I, why am I doing this? That is a good question. Why are you, Anna? Yes. I mean, outside of your mission statement at the beginning of the podcast, (laughs) why are you here? Why am I here? I, uh, I feel like I started this podcast haphazardly, um, without thinking much about it. Obviously, I didn't have this, you know, sometimes people contact me on Instagram or I'm not on Instagram anymore, but like on social media and they would say, hey, I'm such and such coach. What is your passion? What is your mission? We can take you to the next level. Like, I'm like, oh God, like, I don't want to do any of that like stuff. Like, I'm just a regular person. I don't have ambitions like that. Like, I don't want to be a CEO of like Merck or whatever, you know. So when I started the podcast, the, the honest truth is I had a blog like a mommy blog when my daughter was little. I was taking pictures, posting about things, activities, you know, some mommy friends were reading it and it became too much, you know, writing and editing and doing pictures. And then it became something like I had to create content for it because it was growing. And I'm like, like, I don't want to be part of this. This is too much work and it's not enjoyable anymore. And then I was already listening to podcasts. Podcasts were just... uh, you know, emerged 10 years ago and you would listen to them not on your phone, on an app or anything, right? It was on the browser. It was a whole like difficult way of listening to it. And I had some podcasts I was listening to. And from a young age, I always liked radio, audio. I'm a very auditory person. Like I have good ear. I can play the piano. Like auditory is my thing. And then I said to myself, maybe I should start a podcast. And just haphazardly, I had no gear, no idea. I knew I was going to create something for parents, like a reliable resource. And I knew what I was going to do. I knew I was going to cover about stress, emotions. I had five 
like topics, trauma, emotions, stress. I forgot now. Like I said, I'm going to like be specific in that area and cover topics. I didn't give myself like a time limit when I'm going to start or end. I just wanted to do it and just started it. Obviously it grew. And I remember the first time a listener sent me a note that shook me a little bit. And I'm like, I guess this is serious. You know, there are people who are listening because you just see the numbers. You don't see the people. And I think I have grown a lot as a podcaster myself. I learned a lot. Definitely. I learned a lot. I want to improve. I want to get better. Even with each episode I release, I'm like, I should have not done that. I should have done it this way. I try to improve. I think it keeps me growing as an individual, as an interviewer, as a person. Yeah. And I can tell like if I ever listen listen to an older episode, which is, is very rare. I'm like, oh God, like, thank God, like I have improved. Like, I don't want to listen to that Diana anymore. Yeah. And I do want to obviously bring interesting content. And the podcast actually follows my own interest, my own growth trajectory, where I am in my own mind. You know, I get so many pitches every day, you know, like just one before we got on the Zoom call, there is there's a pitch. I'm like, oh God. But I do find my own guests, you know, I want to stay true to my own mission for, for sure. How do you uncover new guests? How, what's your methodology for, you know, finding digging in and People. That's a good question. I read a lot, right? Uh, let's say I read a book and in the book, the author mentions another author in their book. I go immediately look at that book and obviously I read that and I'm like, hmm, I should have him on the podcast. I may listen to a podcast and hear someone speak and I'm like, I should have her on my podcast. Or it's mostly through reading, I would say. I am obviously reading you know, similar things all the time, right? Personal growth and that kind of stuff. I go to the bookstore, I browse and I see new books. I take pictures. I'm like, let me check out those books. And if I like the content of the book, I do research on the author. And if I like what they're saying, what they stand for, I contact the, the author. It's usually either directly or they have a, you know, publisher or someone, some publicity person and send them an email. I tell them why I like their work and who I am and what I do and why would I like to have them on the podcast, how I think they are a good fit for the show. So I write them a really genuine email and mostly people respond and we schedule, then we wait. Like I'm waiting for someone. There is a book I read on grief recently. And I'm like, wow, this is just so good. I want to contact this author. I contacted the author. He didn't respond for a long time. And then one day he responded and said, oh, Anna, can you contact me in June, July? I'm really like busy right now, but I really want to do this podcast with you. So now I have to contact him in July so that at some point he will come on. Sometimes it happens very quickly. I contact someone, let's say today, and they're like, I'll be on next week. I'm like, whoa, like, I didn't learn much about you. Like, give me time. <laughs> That's a little too soon. But I usually am. It's a continuous process because you have to release an episode every week. What you are hearing, let's say today, I researched and learned about that maybe six months ago or like four months ago. And I contacted the person ahead of time. Right. So it's this ongoing. I have ongoing, you know, I'm constantly creating new relationships, like reaching out. I am. At the same time, I'm reading and learning about one guest. I'm interviewing someone else at the same time. So it's this constant process, I would say. I mean, so basically it occupies a lot of mind space and time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm not going to take money for it. No, I choose not to subscribe to advertisers. Yes, I'm doing for that reason. I don't want to promote things that I don't believe in. I don't want you to be a consumerism. I don't want to promote that. I am not a uh, materialist, consumerist person. So I stand for certain things and this is my creation. It's aligned with my values. I can make a ton of money, probably like, I don't know how much money if I were to advertise things, but do I want to advertise things? 
I really don't. And I don't believe my listeners should buy those products because I'm making money out of it. I would never do that. And not that other people are doing, I'm judging them. I like, don't get me wrong. If someone is making millions of dollars, good for them, right? I go what's aligned with me. No, I'm not making money from the podcast, but that's the truth. Uh, there are people who make donations, but that's very little. It doesn't even cover the monthly cost for the editor's fees, whatever donation we get. So I am paying for this endeavor for the past eight years, but I'm okay with that because it helps me in, like I have this community, this is invaluable, right? Like you mentioned through the pandemic, we've been there for each other. That's priceless. Yeah. So that's what I believe in. And honestly, like my podcast is, it's about like trauma and things like that. Like, I don't want to interrupt this tender moment between a guest and myself and sell you a po like a mattress or something. It's like, are you kidding me? Like when I hear that on other podcasts, like it's a turn off and the podcast space is saturated now and there are so many advertisers. Oh my goodness. No, I, even if something is aligned within the parenting or maternity or child, I don't want to promote that. I trust that my listener, if they want to buy something, they'll go and research and buy their own thing. Like, no, I am not a merchant. Yes. What, yes, that's true. And, and if you want to send me things so I can test and tell other people that I liked it, uh, most likely I'm not going to use that product. So no, I can't fake it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, that's yeah. why it's authentic parenting because you are truly authentic. It's aligned with my values. I live my values and it makes me, you know, makes me happy. That's the main thing, thing to take away. Any other questions for this press conference? <laughs> uh, what do you want to know? Like the dirty sides of the podcast thing? <laughs> Are you thinking of having another in-person retreats, parenting? Yes, we're having one. April 27th. Is that the live podcast? It is the live podcast. Yeah, it's not a retreat, but it's it's fun. It's We have activities, we have food, we have music. It's, it's really wonderful. It's not a big one-day conference like the one you attended in 2019, but it's a shorter version and you get to go home at the end of the day. But it's really great. Last year, we held one, right, with Daniel Mate, and it was fantastic. And this year, we're doing it on April 27th. And I saw the people who are purchasing tickets are the same people who came last year. It's like, this is what I'm talking about. This is my community. These are the people. But we should. Yes, yes, yes. But I need help with coordination, right? I have no idea what's happening. Maybe Colleen can help us with that or other listeners who are listening. We can. Yeah, I am up for it. Definitely. Colleen always says, take the show on the road. <laughs> to the Midwest. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because Julie and I have met, but not in the Midwest. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's, it is interesting. Like the, the webs that, you know, the podcast or like the ripples that, you know, the podcast has kind of caused. And it's just interesting in that way. It is. And so I'm excited that we're going to get to meet one day, Anna, but. Yes, it hasn't, yes, it hasn't yes. worked out as of yet. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We're definitely going to meet. I am excited to meet you. And there's a few other people who I want to meet who've been part of this journey. You know, Matthew, is she listening? She's most likely going to come to my live event, you know, that this year from Tennessee, she's going to travel, which is really nice. It's exciting. Yeah. I just got a text from Justin the other day. It's so fun. Like I haven't heard from him in, in a while and to get a message from him. You know, he was on our weekly calls too. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Uh, it's interesting. Everybody has grown. You know, I see them on social media, how they have grown. It's wonderful. I am excited for this community. As for the dirty secrets, like people always ask me and maybe we can put this in the podcast, they say, hey, are there any interviews that you have conducted but never posted? And there are such interviews. I think there are maybe three or four that I interviewed the guest and I'm like, oh my Lord, we are not like aligned. This is not what I want to say on my podcast. And it's not like one thing about the guest or it's maybe the way they deliver or maybe the topic. And honestly, they did not follow up or anything. It's maybe they thought it's released, you know, but I didn't release like maybe three or four episodes like that. 
I had the conversation. I'm like, no, like I am not exposing my audience to this. Like, no, that's a tricky question. My favorite is the one that I just recorded. Well, my latest favorite, let's say, with the, Dr. Frank Anderson about trauma. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to release it. It's so good. My favorite podcasts usually, I'll tell you, are the ones that I connect with the guest, like on a deeper level, like on a human level, you know, most guests are nice and kind and I resonate with them. I think I have good people skills. I am just going to say that. But there are guests who take it to the next level. Like my conversation with Daniel Mate, the first one, or my conversation with Seth Gillihan. And we don't prepare for those podcasts, right? Like the guest knows that I invited them to talk about their book, about their subject, but I don't write questions for myself or for them or thanks, things like that. I mean, it's just very, I follow my curiosity. I prepare for it, but I don't have like rigid questions. So the ones that are my favorite are the ones who go deep and there is this nice back and forth and we are on the same wavelength that there is some authentic connection. It doesn't happen with every guest, but when it happens, I believe that it translates for the listener too. It transfers. And I am sure the listener listens that, wow, this was amazing because I walk away. I'm like, oh my gosh, like this person, like I just met them, but the way they make you feel or the things that you talk with them, those are my favorites. Seth Gillihan, I had that with him. And I, at the end of the conversation, I said, hey, I'm, I want to do a live event this year. Do you mind coming on? Like we've never met or anything. And he said, yes. So he's my guest because because I had that deep resonance with him. I remember there was a man that you interviewed and I remember you telling me you had such a strong connection with him that you were going to talk after your call. I think it was an older man. Yeah. Who was that again? Fred Luskin. Fred Luskin about forgiveness. I will not forget that person. It's just like, sometimes you see not only their professional side, but their human side deeply. And those are the guests that I love that are very open as an individual. The only time a podcast guest contacted me and said, hey, I know we're talking about this topic, but are you going to send me questions? I'm like, well, I don't send out questions. And that person was an expert on anxiety. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. (laughs) (laughs) That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. They, nobody never asks, what are we going to talk about? They just show up. (laughs) Yeah. How about interviews or podcasts that you've had where it's just been awkward and uncomfortable? Like, have you had many of those? Not many. No, not many. Thankfully, not many. Well, the last awkward one was with Near Al, where I'm like, no, this is, but I was able to manage that. Awkward was with Nedra Tawab, who is very right? Nedra Tawab, the boundaries person. Her book is excellent, but her, it was, she was so tough to connect to on a human level. She was here to deliver a message and that's about it. And those are the guests that I'm like, oh, like I want to break through the wall, you know? And she's talking about boundaries. No wonder she has like boundaries, right? That was tough one. I expected more from that conversation than the actual episode. Obviously, I'm not going to tell who it was, the one that I fired the guest. Oh God. Oh God. Don't remind me of that. 11 minutes. I spoke to the guest and I'm like, no, 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 no. Like this cannot continue on. I have to stop this train wreck. And I said, well, I'm not going to have this conversation. I don't care how big you are, if you're, you know, and I said, no, we're not doing this. And she, she said, are you being critical of me or something? I said, no, like this is not working. Like you're giving me one word answers. You clearly are tired or don't want to be here. You don't even know my name. You want me to call you doctor, but you don't know my first name. It was, she was late. It was awkward from the very beginning. I tried to my regular like warming up tactics. Nothing worked. She was very guarded. And I asked her a question. She's like, well, that's 25, chapter 25 of my book. I'm like, well, that's what I'm interested in. She had like her agenda. Like you press a button. She talks about the subject, like... No, this is not my type of person. And I said, I said, well, I don't like the answers you're giving me. I said, this is a podcast. I said, after 11 minutes, I said, 
I have no further questions. We're done. I, like it was so tough for me. Speak about brutally honest and direct. That was the first time I did that. And I was shaking inside. I said, we're done. I don't have any questions. Like, I don't want to have this conversation. And she's like, I guess we're not vibing together. I'm like, that's right, sister. We're not vibing together. <laughs> no. Um... And that was a pit- pitch. I didn't obviously initiate this guest on my podcast, needless to say. Yeah. I can see why you steer away from ones that you've been pitched. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right? <laughs> you were yeah. being very respectful of your time and you were setting a boundary. Like It's I not only was, me, but how about okay. my lis- listeners? Like I worry about my listeners. Like I don't care about me. This is not about me anymore. You know, that there's like other things at stake. Yeah, like, I cannot do that. Like I cannot, like imagine your family. You have your neighbor who comes to your home and brings McDonald's for your children all the time. Like, are you going to let that happen? No, I'm not going to let that happen. I am protective of my listeners, even though that's an abstract concept. (laughs) No, that was like so awful. I never had that kind of experience. And after that, I started doubting myself. I'm like, there's something wrong with me. Maybe it's me. Like, I don't know how to connect with people. But no, that was, and that's the only time. What is your daughter's current views on you doing your podcast now? I don't she has a view particularly. I think it's become so commonplace in my family. It's like it's mom with her podcast. I think no one is as excited in my circle of friends. No one is asking me any questions. It's like a thing Anna does like walking. You know, I hate to say it, but it's like that. Mm -hmm. I am excited. Like sometimes I interview someone and I go walk with a friend and I'm like, I just talked to this person, blah, blah, blah. And the way they respond, I'm like, oh no, like they're not interested. (laughs) Call us because it's our thing. I'll say like, I've tried to do a book club on like some of the books that you've recommended that are amazing, you know, sent it out to like 50 other women and like two people respond to me. And I'm like, but don't you want to learn about parenting and how to do better? It's, It's not everybody's thing. I tried to do the same thing with the myth of normal. (laughs) <laughs> I'm like, is there something wrong with me? Why doesn't anyone want to read these books? Yeah. Yeah. No, unfortunately, that's the way it is, you know. But if something interesting happened, and I'll say this and I'll give you a chance to conclude. I was recording a podcast intro, like after the grief episode, which released recently, I don't remember couple of episodes back and I received a phone call. I didn't realize that the recorder was still recording while I answered the phone and the phone conversation got into the recording. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what was this? It was a woman who is a a recent friend, I guess. She's a neighbor. And she called me. She said, Anna, I just listened to your episode on grief and my father just passed away. And it was so like, appropriate and the timing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it was so like in real time, I received her feedback. It felt good to that. It's making a difference for people, you know, because I have so many doubts all the time. I'm like, oh my gosh, what is this episode going to do? Is this good enough? I didn't cover too many practical. I always have doubts about and questions about each episode that gets out. That surprises me to hear you say that because your podcasts to me have been so helpful. I've never been judgmental or critical. Like everything you're putting out there, it has helped transform me. So don't doubt what you're doing. I don't. When you say that, I don't. But that's why I need listeners to say it often. I mean, I'm sorry. I am a product of this unconscious parenting. I need goodies and good jobs. Words of affirmation. And not as often, obviously. Without it, I did it for eight years. And I'm surprised at that, that I have this inner drive to continue. But it's always nice when people say that podcast resonated with me or I loved it or something like that. Because you... You know, I don't want to do something that doesn't have any resonance for other people. Then it's like, that's like a fool's errand, right? (laughs) I don't want to do that. Yeah. So how shall we conclude this episode? I said, join me in celebrating the 400. And I'm very grateful that the four of you came, which is symbolic for the 400. It's, It's exciting. Yeah. How shall we conclude this? What should we say? 
You should each give you some words of affirmation. <laughs> totally. Oh, <boy. laughs> yeah, but that's not my love language, surprisingly. <laughs> okay, but go ahead. I will be all ears. <laughs> I, well, I'll go then. So, Anna, I really appreciate the work that you put into all the podcasts, just the variety of people that you have presented and exposed. And, and as I've said, like some of them don't land for me, but there's always something new that, you know, kind of sparks, you know, thought or uh, an analysis and just the breadth of information that's now available to people when they're first starting that journey of trying to figure out how to parent in a different way. There's just so much knowledge that you've gifted to the world. And I think that's fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate that. I agree with everything she said. <laughs> no, I mean, all of your podcasts, you know, there was a certain time where you told me to stop listening to your podcast because I was overloading and information and, and but it's because it's so good. Like I need the information that you put on your podcast to help me in my growth. And I recommend your podcast all the time to people. I think your podcasts have been so such a helpful tool in my parenting journey. And that's what got me started in the journey when I was doing searches for respectful parenting and just parenting in general and trauma. So to find you, you were one of the first podcasts I actually started listening to. And I think I've told you the story before, but one of the more beginning podcasts at the end, you said, call me, I want to hear from you. And I literally felt I'm like, she sounds like a friend of mine, I'm gonna call her and I never in a million years would call someone randomly like that. I called you. And we had an incredible conversation. So I love how authentic you are. And I love how what you put out there, you are so real, you're vulnerable, you share your stories, you the fact that you've experienced and gone through so much hardship in your life and how much you connect with your community and the people that you interview is just, it's just a beautiful thing to listen to. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> okay. So let me ask this question then, guys, what shall I add to the podcast? What shall I remove or stop doing? Or what shall I keep the same? I know it's a tough one. I have to be honest. I mean, I, just keep doing what you're doing. In my opinion, I don't listen to your podcast and say, oh, why did she do this? Or she, you know, what you're doing is like, I tune into your podcast. And for the most part, pretty much every episode, I finish to the end. And I'm very happy with the fact that I turned it on. And I listen to many other podcasts. And I could critique theirs and have and could answer those questions. But with yours, just keep doing what you're doing because it's working for me at least. Oh, good. I invited the right people to this thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Colleen. I, I know something you should get rid of. Yes. The intro. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Have you noticed it has becoming shorter and shorter? I noticed yeah. it's been becoming shorter and I'm super happy to hear that because I know that it's not something that you enjoy. And I actually noticed that sometimes I would skip ahead just to get to the conversation. If I was short on time, I would actually go past it. And so I was like, see, I need to just even tell her, like, if you don't like it, get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. But the intro is there for the new listener who just stumbled upon the podcast. You are as a veteran listener, you know, you don't have to listen. Hi, I'm Anna Siebel, blah, blah, blah. But the new listener, when they stumble, they need to know, what is this bus? Where is it going? Why should I get on this bus? This is bus 15 is going to Philadelphia. You know, you have to do that. And it's becoming shorter and shorter. I have to be honest, but you're right. Another thought I had, I'm like, I should make my guest to do the intro like themselves with their voice saying, hey, I am, you know, let's say I am such and such. I'm Dan Siegel. Listen to my podcast on relationships and parenting whatever like say a few words like that yeah yeah you should ask at the end of the conversation you'd be like could you do a quick summary that i could use as an intro and then it, since you hate it you gotta you gotta figure out a way to make it yeah not that's a great idea <laughs> yeah i will try maybe we can maybe we can make, make you know the, i 
I listened to it though at one point, I think it's 1.25. So for me, it goes a little faster. <laughs> so maybe that's why <laughs> it doesn't bother me because it is yeah. going pretty fast. <laughs> I'm laughing yeah. because I listened to it at 1.5. I Whoa. listened to it so fast. I'm like, doo, 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 doo. yep. Wow, that's fast. And then I, I listened I to alternate, it. Again. I alternate between those two. <laughs> Do you really? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So like your little, oh, your opening like jingle is very quick. <laughs> Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. I love- so when I slow it down, I'm like, oh, this is much more calming than <laughs> like on the high speed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's good to know. But sometimes it's hard to choose. And the title is hard to choose because the conversation is so like varied, right? I usually choose one aspect of the conversation and title it like that so that it can be attractive. But I'm often, I'm happy with the titles. Most often I'm getting better at titling episodes, but sometimes I'm like, geez, this episode is so great. The title doesn't capture it, you know? So there is limitations in that. That's so interesting. What else? Anything else? Oh, yeah. Lauren, you want to say a few words before we say goodbye? I mean, Colleen and Julie both said it all. I wholeheartedly agree with what they both mentioned. And yeah, I think that in those moments of doubt that, you know, you're naturally going to have them. But just recalling this conversation, because the work that you're doing, I mean, it's profoundly changed me as a mother all these years. I, I mean, yeah, it's, it's very important work that you're doing. And all of your efforts are very apparent. And you may not hear that from your listeners, but just trust that you're making a very big difference. Live with that delusion, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to say I am very grateful again for all of you who I know personally because of the podcast. Some I met in person, some I have yet to meet and give them a hug. And I don't think Colleen likes hugs, but I think I love hugs. You love hugs? Okay, good. <laughs> so I am a big hugger. I will be, you know, happy to meet you, Colleen. I think it's going to happen soon, sooner than we. Thank. And I am so grateful. Every person I met through the podcast, I always said they are my friend. We are from the same fabric or there's something like you attract the same type of people. My listener, like I said, there's an archetype of, of a listener. And the good thing about this podcast, there are devoted listeners. We don't have, we have comers and goers, but I think what distinguishes at least my podcast from others, and I talk to a lot of people, is I have this core listenership and I am in contact with a lot of them. I know them personally. They have my number. They call, they text. It's just incredible how it enriched my life and boosted my happiness. So thank you, my wonderful human beings, fellow human beings. May you be happy. May you be healthy. And may we continue laughing together over the years. Agreed. Yes. Thank you. I am very happy for, for this community. <laughs> <laughs>